is the Big O Show. This is the Big O Show. I, I was curious if the change in uh, playing time allocation at running back yesterday uh, with obviously Miles playing a ton, Malcolm playing only five snaps, was that a logical byproduct of the game plan, which was pass heavy, which would make total sense if that was the reason? Or, and this is what I was curious about, was it also a determination made internally that you need to start playing Miles a lot again because of his production last season in training camp, et cetera? Yeah, I mean, I think we alluded to it last week, you know, kind of similar question um, that, you know, we got to get him going. And, uh, you know, he's able to get some production there. Had a big, you know, a couple of explosives there. Um, obviously, the touchdown pass early in the game was a big one. Um, so, you know, his production is going to help us, whether it's run or pass, you know, and, and it just so happened to be more pass uh, in this past game. Thanks, George. Omar? Omar? In terms of, uh, I know this is something that's obviously not gonna be comfortably addressed, but um, Flores and the quarterback, uh, Jacoby acknowledged that now it's you communicating with them um, straight through the head to the headset. Um, how much does that impact you and your role and your ability to um, get the intent of the play call out um, in, in terms of being the communicator with the quarterback? Um, you know, there's a, there's a lot of things that, you know, I feel like I see before the, before the snap. So as much as, as, you know, I can communicate to those guys, um, you know, especially from upstairs, I think will help them, um, whether it's just breaking a huddle communication offensively, defensively, whether we're aligned, right. Um, so I think that that streamlined things a lot, um, you know, and, uh, I kind of leave it at that. Go back to Barry. George, how do you feel the offensive line played with the changes? Did, did you guys emerge from the game thinking, you know, I think we might be on to something with Liam at left tackle and Austin at left guard? Yeah, I think that, that there were some plays that, that uh, you know, were really impressive, honestly, and then some that we'd like to, you know, get corrected. Um, I think Austin's kind of working his way through some things. Uh, and for, you know, within a week, he, he made some you know, pretty big steps there. Um, Liam is just going to continue to get better. Um, and, uh, you know, hopefully that group can maintain some consistency and some um, cohesiveness. Uh, we've had, whether it's that position, that, that group or the receiver group, kind of been some, you know, plug and play with some different players. And, and the more cohesive and consistent we can be with the same people out there, the better off we'll be. Joe. Hey, George. Um, Coach Flo seemed pretty um, uh, encouraged about how Tua Tungavalo uh, looked today. Um, what are some of the things that he was doing well, in your opinion, um, before he got hurt that you would like to build on moving forward? Yeah, you know, it was it was basically, you know, we go and play the New England game, and and we had some. I said a couple couple plays or a couple plays within the series that we'd like to have back, but overall, as far as leading the group, you know, it was, it was pretty consistently done, um, and you know that was starting to build some relationships with uh, you know each position, and so you know whenever there's a, a lapse of time like that, it's kind of I don't want to say restarting, but you know we're getting back on the field now. There's a little bit of an injury deal, so. Um, it's getting back that confidence that really you develop all training camp. So uh, for, for Tua, it'll be getting back on, out, out there on the field, being decisive, um, you know, getting back that silent alarm and, and really getting back to, you know, where he was, he was building off from training camp, um, you know, and, and, and kind of taking it from there. Thank you. Omar? How much concern do you have, George, about uh, him playing with pain? And, and what will you be looking for this week in practice to give you those indications that you're not putting him at risk in harm's way? 
Yeah, it's a unique week too, Omar. You know, with us traveling and and uh, and and getting ready here for the you know the London it's called itinerary. So, uh, but you know, whenever there's an injury at any position, you obviously you're looking to see you know what happens you know on a hit or or you know get get tackled whether it's an, another position or not. So, you know, maybe we won't be able to find those things out honestly till till game time. Uh, but as far as certain throws, making sure, you know, he's able to to you know, rip a ball out to the sideline if he has to, you know, show some touch uh, over some linebackers, uh, avoid, you know, movements in the pocket. Those are obviously things that are going to happen throughout the game that you'd like to get a, a look at and practice. And hopefully they come up from a, um, you know, just a, a – and whether it's the play that develops a defensive lineman that kind of gets an edge on an offensive lineman, you like to see those movements take place. It's a little bit different when there are no movements, which is kind of what's going on right now, um, just to make sure that you actually have the functionality to, to execute that when that happens. So um, it, it's always a, a touchy thing with all injuries, but obviously when he has the ball in his hand, he'll be making those movements. And, um, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll take it day by day this week and see if we can kind of arrive at a, a, a place that we feel comfortable with before before the game. Joe? <clears throat> Joe, did you have a question? Okay. Um, I'll go to Daniel. Hey, George, hope you're doing well. I wanted to ask about uh, yesterday's game, and I noticed that you guys ran a lot of kind of spread formations, but with 12 personnel as opposed to 11 personnel. Was that more a byproduct of, you know, not having Devontae in a will? And, you know, regardless, um, what did you maybe like about using the 12 personnel in those formations as opposed to 11 with three wide receivers? Yeah, I think that's a good question, and it's got a lot of, you know, the tight ends have a, have a versatile role. And uh, whether it's run or pass, um, you know, attached, extended, and they can they can align in all those different spots. So, you know, I noticed some some of them, you know, may have seemed like spread formations, but as a tight end, uh, those guys really are, are dual dual role players. Um, you know, sometimes they motion in, sometimes they motion out. Um, you know, receivers are usually detached and and rarely are in the core of the formation. So. Um, you know, it, it, obviously, when when you lose a receiver middle of the week, there's some things that you got to adjust. But you know, I think we can play the game both, you know, extended and attached, if you will, from with the tight ends. Thank you, Joe. Sorry about that. My uh, internet failed me for a, a minute there. Don't pass the buck. <laughs> I take full responsibility. I'm going to right, try to <laughs> do better. I have to look myself in the mirror. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if you were asked about Preston Williams, but I've always been intrigued by Preston's talent. And obviously he did a couple of good things early in the game yesterday. What, what are kind of like the coaching points for Preston to enable him to when all is said and done to have said, you know what, he at least came close to reaching how good he could be. Like he's coming, he's coming off an injury, and um, you know, getting cleared in training camp, and 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 not only just learning the offense. You know, it's it's easy to think you you have the offense when you're not out there performing. Then all of a sudden, you know, you got 40 seconds in between each play, and you got to run back to the huddle, and you got to get your alignment, and you got to know what identity you are. And so, as we were starting to learn that with Preston. You know, or as he, as he was starting to get back into into things, um, you know, he got the opportunity this past week. Um, you know, made it made a great great play down the sideline there uh, to continue the drive. Um, and another catch and run, you know, that he had. So he he's got to continue to to expand his his knowledge of the game, his alignments, his his route tree. But that that's really what's happening right now that we're seeing. And so. Uh, we can just keep taking steps forward with that, uh, and, and that'll help us. Um, you know, the communication with the quarterback, uh, getting on the same page, you know, the third down play uh, comes to mind. You know, the ball thrown to his his way. Maybe, you know, there's some things we can do better there too uh, and, and really play design, honestly. So, uh, 
he's going to continue to get better. He's 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 improving uh, with his communication on what he actually needs to be where he needs to be uh, when the play is over for the quarterback. And and you know we expect that arrow to continue to 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 trend up. Thank you. Does anyone have any other questions for Coach Godsey? Omar? I want to ask about the offensive line change. How much does that help you from a, well, a play calling standpoint in terms of, obviously this is not a finished product, but having a little bit more pocket security and, and, and pocket comfort for the quarterback? Yeah, I mean, those guys got to prove that each week. Uh, it's a different animal out there going against them. Uh, blitzes, patterns, uh, there's a lot that, that go into that position. And it's really um, that whole group doesn't get as much attention from really, you know, every team as, as it should because there's, there's a lot of things that are on those guys' plates, communicating from inside out, uh, like I said, pass pro, run, actions, and the more that group can work together and uh, continue to excel, play in, play out, uh, the better off our unit will be. And uh, we think that, you know, every offense really goes the way their O-line plays. And, uh, you know, if they can continue to, to, to take it one play at a time and, and really cover up who we need to cover up in both run and pass, then it'll help the quarterback. It'll help the running backs. And obviously, it'll give us time to hit whether it's tight ends or receivers you know, down the field. So, the more that group can play together, the more that communication becomes second nature, and and we'll see a lot of positive plays uh, from there. But that that's it's definitely a good point. This is the Big O Show. This is the Big O Show.